So this video is going to take you through the steps for the first assignment uh, after the break, silly selfies. We're going to gather a photo. You want to get a, a portrait. It could be a selfie. So it could be a selfie, of course, of you, or it could be a portrait of a family member, a friend, it could be a famous personality that you find off the internet. You just want to make sure it's a high resolution image and you want it to um, be a JPEG. So after you gather your photo, hopefully you saved it in your Google Drive or somewhere on your computer, you're going to open up the image and I'm going to use Ryan Reynolds for mine. Uh, it's going to ask you about a pre-size image. I'm just going to go with the original because uh, you're basically looking for the highest pixels. You want it to be a nice large image. Okay, so you can see this is a very good quality image and if I zoom in by going to navigate and drag this bar over back and forth, oops, um, it, you can see that it's a pretty good quality picture. It gets a little pixely as you zoom in but completely fine. Okay, now the very first step after you open this, we're going to use the crop tool and we're going to crop this picture so it is an 8 by 10, 300 pixels per inch. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the crop tool. Now um, you move over here where it says constraint. Um, click on size and this is where you're going to be setting up the width and the height. So there's no place that you can put inches, so we're just going to go with pixels. So the width is going to be 2400. Uh, the, the height is going to be 3000. So the 2400 represents if it was an 8 inch um, image with 3000 pixels per inch, that would make it 2400 pixels. The height is going to be 3000, that would be like a 10 inch image uh, at 300 pixels per inch. So it's at this point that I want to kind of come in. Now I can't make it a square, it's going to stay within the constraints of a rectangle. So you just want to kind of crop it a bit, get rid of some of that background that you don't need um, until you're pretty happy with the location. And then you're going to hit on the top, you're going to hit apply. Okay, so I'm going to fit this on the screen by hitting control zero. So now the idea that we are going to split this up into multiple layers and so you're going to be selecting pieces of this image using the rectangular marquee tool right here and you're going to make a series of layers and on those layers we're going to put different filters and different effects so i'm going to take you through the first step the background layer is not going to be changed at all everything is going to be a layer that's going to be built on it, on top of it. So you're going to go to the marquee tool, make sure you have rectangle selected, um, and you are going to make a selection. So I'm going to make it kind of a square and I'm going to focus on one of the eyes like that. You can change the size of the rectangles. You should change the size. They should, every time you make a new rectangle, it should be kind of some should be taller, some should be wider, some should be larger, maybe some smaller, but you want to have a nice balance of those different shapes. You don't want to have um, a whole cluster of one size, and we'll talk about the, the balance in a little bit. So I just found a, an image uh, just getting that one eye. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that image, um, uh, what's inside. So I go to Edit, and I can go to Copy. You can use Control c for Copy. Um, then I'm going to go to edit and again you can use control V for paste. So you notice that there is a new layer and the layer is, uh, it shifted in the center, that's the one downside to using Pixlr is that it brings that layer to the center, but that's okay, you can just realign it. You're going to go to the arrange tool and you just move it up until it's pretty much back to where it was. You don't have to be absolutely perfect. Okay. So the, the thing that we're going to do to this now is we're going to be putting a filter on this particular layer. You can see it's got a weird name to it, not the background. You're going to make sure you, that you have the layer um, that you're changing. Make sure that that one's active. So you can start by going to filter. There is an effect library. There's also some of these uh, different effects here. You can absolutely play around and change, uh, try them out, see what works. But I find that when I went to the effect library, you have colors in stage, two old friends, blah, blah, blah. The one that I tend to work on a lot is artsy. So if you scroll down, you can see different 
sorts of effects. There's also, you can change the severity of it. Um, so I use dark street, so that's one. Now, if I wanted to change the color of this, I can do that and I can do that later. So basically your first step is to take, get those layers and you're going to um, stack them all up. So I'm going to go back to the background now. It's very important that you go back to the background to make a new selection. So this one, I'm going to go with a taller piece and I'm going to get like his forehead in and I'm purposely overlapping. It's a good idea to overlap those layers. It just creates, again, it creates a little visual interest and it creates a little bit of depth. So again, I'm on background. I'm going to hit control C and control V and it control, uh, it copied and it pasted it. So I'm going to put this in back where it was in place, the best of my ability here. And then I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to put a different effect on it. You can try outer glow. You can try a series of different types of filters. Oh, this one just does it on the outside. So I'm not really a big fan of that. I'm cancel it. Go back to filter. Let's go to effect library again. I'm going to go back to artsy. And let's see if there's any other ones. I'll try Mosaic. And you can see that it will give you an idea of what it looks like there. That looks pretty good. It's kind of subtle. One last time, back to the background. And I'm going to make a new selection. This time I'm going to go around here. And it's kind of, just make a note. Try not to put your edges of those spaces right up against here. Try to avoid having them lined up. You know, try to get them so they're kind of staggered on each other. So again, I'm going to hit copy, control C, control V, and I paste it, get in place. So you're going to be repeating this. Okay. I'm going to put this on pause and I'm going to be uh, continually working and I'm, I'm going to jump back to this. Okay. So I've been working. You basically want to keep going until you have about, you know, 10 layers more or less. That's what you're probably going to end up with. Some of the spaces you can see I have kind of large. Some of them are a little bit smaller. So a couple things I want to talk about. Once you think you have it done, and you can see, for one thing, um, by the way, if you hit the little line next to navigate on the right-hand side, you can minimize that. And I did that with history as well, so I can really just kind of see the layers on the right. Um, if you have an if you make a layer and the layer is in front of something, but you want it to be farther back, you can take these layers and drag them behind other layers or in front of other layers. So for example, I had this image and it was just a line going right across. I had that, um, I selected that and it was way, way up in front. So I moved it so it was more behind everything else. So you can certainly change the order. Another thing is if you hit the background and you hit that little uh, check and you can make it invisible, you can see if you've missed some spaces. So down here, I still need to put a, another layer or two down here to fill that. So to do that, again, make sure you're on the background. You don't want to select a, you don't want to copy from a different layer other than the background. So I made that, I, I selected more than I thought I needed, that's fine. And I hit Control C and Control V and it pasted it. Oh, it pasted the old stuff. So let me go back for a second. Let me do that one more time. I'm going to make a selection right here and I hit control C. So I copied it and control V pasted it. Okay, much better. So I move that in place down here. Now again, if I wanted this to be behind stuff, you could see it's in front of everything. I can just drag it down behind everything. Um, a couple of things I Besides going to the filter and going to affect a library, if you go to adjustments and you go to like color balance, color lookup, color, uh, hue saturation, you can create some really, really nice effects. So I do want you to try those out. If I go to hue saturation, for example, and you can see it's only going to affect this area right here. As I drag the hue, you can see that the colors are changing, but you can see that it's using a couple of colors, the blue in the background 
and his jacket here are changing to green while his skin tone is changing to purple. If you want it to be one color, meaning monochromatic, if you slide the toggle colorize, notice that now the, the um, layer is, is monochromatic, so it's using one color. And you can certainly drag that around. You can increase the saturation. So because I'm an art teacher, I'm going to be asking you to not get too caught up in a, in a rainbow of colors. Try to stick to three, maybe four colors that are kind of evenly distributed on the color wheel. Meaning if you have some warm colors like red and yellow, balance it out with some cooler colors and also repeat colors over. So you see this bright yellow that I picked? I really like that. And I think I'm going to use it up here. Now that doesn't mean I have to change this to yellow for a balance. What I can do is I can go back to background. I can make a whole new selection. You can just make a new layer just just to kind of make, you know, just because you need a little um, visual interest up here. So you could see the shape that I made. I'm on the background. I hit Control C, Control V, and I pasted it. And I'm going to move it back in place where it was, more or less. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I focus on making it yellow. So I could go to Color Lookup, and I could try to you know, mess around with this and see if I can create that that yellow color, capture it, um, and I could do something like that. Maybe I want to incorporate a little bit of another color, maybe that tealish kind of color I have down here. So you can see that it's pulling it's pulling some of the colors from here and here up in there. So that actually looks good. So you want to have a nice balance of color. So if you have a color shown somewhere, like down here, make sure you repeat it somewhere. Similarly, um, you know, kind of visually balance them on different sides of the, of, the, um, of the image. So you can see I have like black and white, almost like an x-ray kind of looking thing here in the middle, and that's fine. This one here, that's fine. If you wanted to change anything, um, you can. For example, imagine if I wanted this to be... Uh, I don't know, like a purple or something like that, or something to kind of grab this color up in here. You can do that by going to adjustments and um, hue saturation, and then you can colorize it, and then you can drag it around. So you can certainly mess around with the color scheme. I am looking at for a nice balance of color. So if, again, if you used a color somewhere, use it in a different spot in the picture somewhere else, and limit your color scheme to about you know, three, maybe four colors. Okay. Um, also a variety. So I have a very grainy looking thing here. Maybe I want to try to find something a little grainier um, somewhere else. So, and also paying attention to the order of your layers. So if you change the order, you can certainly um, create different effects. Okay. Now the very, very last thing I want to talk about is that if you wanted to alter this a little bit more, like if you wanted to um, enlarge these a little bit and rotate them slightly, you can certainly, you know, you could certainly do that. It makes it kind of fun and, and whimsical and stuff and kind of crazy. So you can certainly have some fun. I, I am going to um, make sure that these guys do still look like faces. I don't want them to look something, you know, completely different than, than a face. Well, kind of harder to rotate than I thought. So you can certainly mess around with all of that stuff. So again, refer to, um, I also have the rubric open so you can kind of see what the, um, what I do expect of you guys to do. Biggest things I can tell you to do is make sure when you're copying a rectangle that you are copying it from the background. You don't want to um, cut pieces of an already existing layer. Um, changing the size of the selection and, and changing the uh, slightly rotating them, you can do that. Um, that should be it. So then when you go to save it, you're going to be saving it. Um, if you want to keep working on it from day to day, you can save it as a PXD. But if you are ready to submit it, submit it as, save it as a JPEG. And then go ahead and submit it into Classroom. Okay? So you know where I'll be. You know how to get in touch with me if you would have any questions at all about this assignment.